Hello, I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary, and welcome to From the Heart. Orlando is widely known for its tourist spots and attractions, but many people don't know about its thriving arts community. We're happy to introduce to you talented artists and passionate leaders whose ideas are shaping our arts community. How do they create and why? And how will Orlando benefit from a growing arts presence? On each episode, we'll meet guests who are influential leaders and artists who are truly making a difference. From the heart. Hello everyone, welcome to From the Heart. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary. And we're excited to bring to you all that's new and good when it comes to the arts in Central Florida. Today we're talking with Scott Evans, Coordinator for Visual and Performing Arts of Orange County Public Schools. We look forward to learning about Scott and his current work with our young artist of Orange County. Welcome Scott. Thank you so much. We are so glad to have you today. So tell us a little bit about your role uh, with Orange County Public Schools as the coordinator. Sure, so as the Administrator for Visual and Performing Arts for Orange County Public Schools, um, I I have the role of getting to advocate for arts education in our schools. So I work with principals, I work with school board members, I work with community leaders to make sure that everyone understands the importance and value of arts education in our schools. And then I work to also clear any hurdles so that we can make sure that all kids have access to arts education in the schools. What is the challenges of that job? Hmm. Um, there's a ton challenges? of challenges to that <laughs> job. To begin, um, right? Yeah, where to begin? Um, you know, always there's financial challenges because arts programs can be very expensive. If you're trying to uh, put together an orchestra, you've got to purchase instruments, which has a lot of uh, expense to it. If you're putting together a band, requires a lot of instruments, a lot of capital to have that happen. We are fortunate in Orange County Public Schools that we support our programs financially so that uh, the majority of our programs have what they need so that the kids can be successful, but always, there's always a need for that. Um, also, there's uh, challenges with the scheduling. Schedules are packed with uh, mm. state-required courses mm -hmm. that make it harder and harder sometimes to fit in the arts courses in a student's day. Um, so that's a challenge that we're always trying to find the best fit so that kids, again, can be successful in those arts classes and be successful academically mm. in their classes. How supportive are the parents? Do they tend to want the arts programs in the schools? Yes, we have an amazingly supportive uh, parent base in this community. I mean, if you look at just at the big picture that, you know, we've passed two essentially tax increases over mm. the past several years during this poor economy just to protect the arts in our schools. And they, both times the one mil increase passed with uh, huge margins. Of, mm -hmm. So that to me is about parents understanding the mm -hmm. value of the arts that's going on in their schools. And they're seeing that what their students are getting is high quality. So they want to fund it and they want to make sure it exists. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't only prove that it's just the parents supporting, but also our community as well. And exactly. rally around those yeah. tax increases. What do those tax increases help us do in our school system? So that money goes towards, uh, number one, preserving quality teachers in all content areas. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, making sure that we have opportunities for students who are um, interested in athletics or interested in sports, that they have those opportunities to participate in those courses. And it also makes sure that our students have access to arts education in our courses. So that it made sure that uh, cuts to arts, PE, health, quality teachers mm. is off the table in our district. Those things are things that we want to make sure our kids have access to. And mm. those dollars absolutely impacted the uh, our ability to be able to do that. That's great. I feel like there are so many ways that you could have described your role, and you, the first thing that you said was that you're an arts advocate. advocate. I thought that and too. I, I love the word advocacy. Uh -huh. So, you know, tell us about how are you fighting for the arts personally in your role? I mean, I'm sure there's many things that you're doing, sure. but what's important to you as the leader uh, of this in our school right. system? Uh, I believe that the most important advocacy we can do or the best way to advocate for what we do is to have the highest quality teachers mm -hmm. and the highest quality arts experiences in our school. And how do you ensure that? How do you ensure that you're getting sure. the best teachers? Mm -hmm. Well, we do a lot of recruiting. We do a lot of um, uh, trainings for our teachers so that they have the latest um, ways to approach teaching arts education. We make sure that they collaborate together so they can grow from each other. 
Uh, we make sure that they are attending conferences where they're learning about strategies for being best teachers and the best teachers. We um, work to make sure that the curriculum is in alignment with what they should be doing in their courses. So we take the state standards and then we create a uh, scope and sequence, which is a, a sequence of the way instruction should happen in the classrooms to help them guide students to the process of learning about whatever their particular art form is that they're studying. Do they also have the freedom to bring in their own version or are they strictly under the way that you are asking them to collaborate? Sure, so the standards are a guideline mm -hmm. and the standards say what should be covered in every arts classroom. How teachers deliver that is the, up to them. So if they, they all can use different approaches to make sure kids are getting to this, the end point, however, uh -huh. so that we can say these are the specific skills that we teach kids in our classes. Can you think of one approach that a teacher has used that sticks out in your mind that kind of wowed you? Sure. Um, I, you know, one of the things that our elementary teachers are really uh, focused on is using the ORF approach. And Carl ORF was a composer that really mm. developed a, um, a very playful way of learning music in the elementary music classroom. Um, and we have a strong ORF group in our district that work together constantly. They all train each other, they train all of our teachers, and they, they approach learning about music through play. And that really is the oh, best way for kids to learn about skills in music education. I wonder if they could transfer that way of teaching to other, uh, to sports or to English mm -hmm. or... Mm -hmm. Sure. I think it's very transferable. Yeah. I mean, in all content areas, I think the more play we do, the more kids there remember and retain. We play you know. an instrument. Right. Yeah. yeah. We heard yeah. one of our uh, interviews just recently talk about how their whole journey, their fabulous leader in our arts community now, mm -hmm. began in the fourth grade with a recorder. Oh, And I said, oh, <laughs> those great. recorders really can yeah. make a difference. Yeah. Which yeah. turned into bassoon, which then turned right. into being an executive Absolutely. director of the Orlando Philharmonic. Yeah. So yeah. it all started with up. a recorder, though. I, why <laughs> didn't I pick up a recorder? <laughs> you know, I was asked yeah. this question just a few days ago when I was doing a speaking engagement about how in a, in a time in, in the school school system where standards and curriculum and all those things seem to kind of dictate what happens in the classroom. How do we still make a difference in a child's life if they don't measure up to those standards, whether it be a test or mm -hmm. they don't measure up in some kind of, you know, um, administrative way? Mm -hmm. um, how can they still, how can we still make sure they measure up? Um, well, it's, I don't know that it's about measuring up. It's the, the measurement is really about understanding what a student needs to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, flipping that around and not saying that the measurement is what determines whether they're successful or mm -hmm. not. The measurement is just how we are getting data to help us understand what we need to do to help kids be successful in life. And that fits across all content areas. And in the arts, it's just as important that we monitor students' progress with learning specific skills so that they're really ready to be successful either as a young artist, when they you know leave us and move on, hopefully for the rest of their life to participate in the arts, or if they just become a lover and appreciator of the arts, mm -hmm. we want it to be an educated um, knowledge so that they're not ignorant about the arts, but have yes. a really good, deep understanding of what the arts are about and how the arts are made. When uh, Mayor Buddy Dyer was here, he talked about in high school being on the football team, and his coach wanted the football players and the cheerleaders to take a drama class to lear learn to work mm -hmm. collaboratively. So mm -hmm. after practice, they'd have to go shower and take a drama class. Right. Well, they ended up really liking it. Long story short, their play won finals. And what a, what a great story. And yeah. he talked about how it helped him, certainly in public speaking, but the team effort. And mm -hmm. when he spoke at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts, he had his drama teacher right there in the front. That's I love wonderful. that story, but yeah, it made a wonderful. difference for him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What are some ways that, that you guys recognize students that might be excelling in their area, mm -hmm. you know, like best percussion player of the year, <laughs> whatever it may be, you know, what are some ways that you guys really give accolades to students sure. in the arts? I mean, we have a lot of, um, I don't even want to call them competitions, a lot of opportunities where we take students to things like solo and ensemble, which happens mm -hmm. in the music world, and students can showcase their individual musicianship in a setting where they're a uh, juried by a, a special panelist that will give them a score. Again, it's not about a competition, so we don't say that you're the better oboe over this oboist, <laughs> but it's it's a process where they learn about their strengths, and they do get rated and given opportunities to come back the following year to see if they keep Simply. improving on mm. those. Theater world has thespians, both uh, local, state uh, thespians, where students do ensemble work, they do individual work, so they're really getting to showcase their ability to be a team player in a, in a production, or if they're doing a, a monologue, they get to show their skills in that. And again, that's about a rating in addition to getting um, information about how to improve. So mm. what's important to us is that we don't do competitions where either you get a trophy or don't. It's mm -hmm. about 
what are the things you need to do to improve so that when you keep coming back, you're getting better and better, better and growing as an artist. Love it. So. Scott, we're about to wrap up this particular segment, but if there's a parent out there watching that might have a question for you or an idea for you, how can they get in touch? Sure. They can, I'm on the OCPS website, so they can go to Orange County Public Schools, OCPS.net, and look up curriculum and find the performing visual and performing arts, and uh, my email will be there along with my phone number, so they can Great. contact me that way. Great. Isn't that wonderful that you make yourself mm -hmm. available? Thank mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. And we're going to be back to find out a little bit more about uh, what brought you to this point today. So Great. thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you, Scott. Thanks. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this segment with Scott of Orange County Schools. Please join us when we return to hear about the life path he chose prior to his creative work with children from the heart.